Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this, own this book, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The book contains 230 problems, 230 problem solving questions. It contains 174 data sufficiency questions. We have already solved every single math problem from this book. If you are interested in watching any of the original solutions to the problems, you will find the original solutions from day number 1 through 250. Right now we are in the process of redoing the problems and we are on page number 290. Please turn to it. Page number 290, the penultimate problem on the page number 164. Let's see what it has to say. Number 164. Problem number 164 tells us that if x is negative is y positive. As always pretty straightforward simple question that they're telling us if x is negative can are we able to tell whether y is positive. Let's find out what they tell us. In the first statement they tell us that x over y is negative. x over y is negative. x divided by y is negative. But we know that x is negative which means a negative quantity divided by y is negative. The only way that can be that can, that that is possible, the only way that is possible, obviously y cannot be negative because negative times negative divided by negative, negative divided by negative would have been positive. Would have been positive. Negative divided by negative would be positive. And because we are told that x divided by y is less than zero, the y that we're looking at has to be positive. The y has to be positive. So are we able to answer the question? Is y positive? The answer is yes, y is positive. Again, the point here is not, the point here is not that the answer turned out to be yes. The point here is that we are able to answer definitively either in affirmative or negative. Do you understand? The first statement does the job. First statement does the job quite nicely. A D B C E. A D B C E. Now that we've established that the first statement by itself is enough, we know now answer cannot be B, C, or E. It will have to be either A or D. Let's look at second statement. In the second statement, they go on to tell us that y minus x, they go on to tell us that y minus x is, po uh, is positive. If we add x to both sides, x drops out, and what this tells us is that y is more than x. So the question now is, simply by knowing the fact that this y quantity is more than x, is there enough data for us to be able to ascertain whether or not y is positive? Well, let's find out, shall we? For example, x could be x could be negative 10. If x is negative 10, then negative 10 is more than, uh, than positive 10. y positive 10 is more than negative 10. Question is, is y positive? The question was, is y, is y positive? That's what we're trying to answer. The question that we're answering is, is y positive? That's what we have to be able to answer right here. Well, all we know is that y is more than x. One scenario is that maybe x is negative 10 and y is positive 10. In which case, is y positive? The answer is yes, y is positive right here. It's positive. But at the same time, it is quite possible that x is negative 10 and y is negative 9 or negative 1. In which case, the y is still, y, y is still more than, negative 9 is still more than negative 10. But is, is y positive? Answer here is, no, it is not positive. It is, it is actually negative. So simply knowing that y is more than x does not enable us to establish whether or not y is positive for sure. It may be or it may not be. Second statement does not do the job and therefore the answer to this question is A. Second statement does not do the job. Second statement is not enough. Let's go on to the next one. Number 165, the very last problem. The very last problem on the page. This word penultimate, we have probably covered it by now 50th time, uh, 50 times, and we're going to do it for the 51st time right now. 
penultimate, which is just a very fancy way of saying the second to the last. The problem that we just finished was the penultimate problem on the page. It was the second to last problem on the page. Penultimate. And when did we learn this word? I know for a fact we learned it because we have covered it, as I said, many times. Day number 11. Day 11. If you are interested in improving your vocabulary, just type in Gmail vocabulary words. Day 11 and you will learn about penultimate or day 27 you will learn about qualify. Day 71 where we learn the word more about. Number 165. The very last problem is a very straightforward simple geometry problem. The question is what's the circumference of the circle? Circumference is how much of the circle? What is the circumference of the circle that is given to us in the picture here? And what we are told is that this is the center, we have a triangle that goes like this. And we are told that this makes a 90 degree. This is O, this is X, and this is, there is another point here somewhere Y, and this is Z. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what they tell us. In the first statement they tell us that the perimeter, perimeter of triangle OXZ is equal to 20 plus is equal to 20 plus 10 times root 2. Well let's talk about this this particular triangle that they're talking about the triangle OXZ OXZ this triangle OXZ O X and Z X is the center of the circle. This is the center we are told. It makes a right angle. Well, if it's the center of the circle, then the distance from here to here is the radius. The distance from O to X is also radius. And what do we know about a 45? It's a 45 45 triangle. It's an isosceles triangle because these two sides are equal, which means this angle is equal to this angle. It's a 45 45 uh, 90 triangle. In isosceles triangle, we know that the ratio of the side is always 1 to 1 root 2. And there is a reason for it. If this side is 1 and this side is 1, then we know that uh, we know that 1 squared plus 1 squared has to be this side squared. I'm making it far too complicated. You already know it. It's 1, 1, root 2. In other words, in other words, if the radius is r, if the radius is r, and this is r, this is going to be root 2 times r. The question is what's the perimeter of this triangle? Perimeter of this triangle, perimeter of this triangle is r plus r plus root 2 times r, which is exactly what we have here. What we have here is this 20 is simply 10 plus 10 plus 10 times root 2. In other words, the radius of this triangle is 10, this is 10, and therefore this is 2 times root 10. And therefore the perimeter is 10 plus 10 plus 2 times root 10, 10 plus 10, this right here, 10 plus 10 is our 20, 20 plus 10 times root 2, it should say 10 times root 2, not 2 times root 10. 10 times root 2. 10 times root 2, or if you like here, you can say r times root 2 r times root 2, because that's, that's, the, that's the proportion the sides are in, 1, 1 and root 2. That's all. So now we know the radius. If we know the radius, the question is can we figure out the circumference? Of course we can figure out the circumference. The first statement does the job quite nicely. Of course if we know the radius of a circle, we can figure out the circumference. A, D, A, D, B, C, E. A, D, B, C, E. Now that we established the first statement by itself is enough, we know now, answer cannot be B, C or E. It would have to be either A or D. If you like, just for curiosity, we can finish it up. Circumference is simply 2 pi r, which we know is 10 times 10. So it's just 20 pi. The circumference of this circle is 20 pi. But we didn't have to do that, you understand? Let's look at second statement, shall we? Let's look at second statement. We're done with the thing. Let's go on to second statement. Let's see what they tell us. Everything has to go, and this has to go, this has to go, that has to go. That R can stay because we, we, are, we are showing that this is the radius, but that can stay if you, if you want. 
The second statement tells us the length of length of arc x y z. This is the second statement is equal to five pi. But what does the length of the arc x y z represent? This this length right here, the length of this arc x y z, this length here. This represents what? Given the fact that this is ninety degrees, this is ninety degrees. Well, if that's 90 degrees, then arc x, y, z, arc x, y, z represents one quarter of the circle or one quarter of the circumference. And we are told that one quarter of the circumference is 5 pi. And if we know one quarter of the circumference, we can figure out the whole circumference. Second statement by itself is also enough. The answer is D. Because one quarter of the circle or one quarter of circumference that's what I meant by circle around the distance around the circle we are told is 5 pi if one quarter of the circumference is 5 pi that implies that the whole circumference has to be 4 times 5 pi which is 20 pi which if you recall is the exact same value of the circumference that we obtained from the first statement they never contradict each other the two statements the information in the two statements never contradict each other. If the first statement told us the circumference was 20 pi, when we do the work, we'll find the exact same value for the circumference from the second statement. Assuming that we have enough information to figure out the circumference, which we do here. The answer is D. That was it. I'll see you tomorrow where we'll start a new page, okay? Bye now.